again. Yes, what's the topic of our lesson for today? Yes, ma'am. Let's all say it together. The goodness of God is saints. One more time. The goodness of God is saints. Okay. Where do we find our, our scriptural reading for today? Scriptural reading taken from. Okay, let's start. Yes, sir. And um, Psalm 22, verse 12. Yes. Yes, thank you. <coughs> Tonight, okay. Let's start with from Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 4. Let's read three two verses. I know that you can start for us. Yes, the many letters you have in the Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's all say the topic again. The goodness of God is the same to his saints. Again. The goodness of God is the Yes. And today, from the very first picture we started with in Isaiah, it says in verse 1, in that day, Thou shalt say, O oh Lord, I will praise thee, though thou wast angry with me. Thy anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me, and thou comfortest me. So, today we are looking at the goodness of God to his saints, as the topic says. And in the previous chapter, we see how Prophet Isaiah described the vision that he, he saw. Who oh, give us a quick description of the vision that he saw? He saw a description of what we call the millennial reign. Yes, who oh, tell us what he saw there in verse 11? Because our Bible study started with that simple description. What will happen in the millennial day? Uh, what is the millennial day? Yes, Brother Wilson, please remind us. Uh, the millennial race is the era when uh, Christ will come and, uh, and to establish his kingdom, and the reign of the Antichrist will come and uh, establish his kingdom, and the reign uh, together with uh, the saints. And uh, as uh, Isaiah described it, we are told that it will be a period of uh, righteousness, 
of peace, of justice, and abundance and plenty where there shall be no more uh, where the, there shall be no more pain for that moment. Yes. And in verse one we see him telling us that he said he will praise the Lord. He said his anger has been turned away and that God comforts him. Now, the first question that I will ask the, question, uh, the class is, who are those that can give thanks to God? Who are those that are qualified to give an acceptable, acceptable thanks to God? Can we discuss it? Yes, sir. The saints of God. The saints of God. Those that have been saved because his anger has been turned away. Sin is what makes God to be angry with man. If you have sin in your life, God will be angry with you. God is angry with the sinner every day. And in that first part, we also it's described to us as a song and then as a hymn. And then we are going to sing this type of song in heaven. So those that have sin in their heart, one will not get to heaven and they will not be able to sing this hymn <clears throat> hymn of praise to God for what he has done and what is the most important thing that God does for his saints for those that call or that are called saints what is the difference what does or what did Jesus do for them Yes, few hands. If I ask how many of us are saved here, I can say enough hands. What's the difference? What have God done for them? Yes, man. The salvation of their soul. Jesus has washed their heart with his blood. And we are also reminded that it's a good thing to praise God. And that every Christian, every born again saint of God, should have a song of praise every day from his or her heart. Do we agree? Yes. Why? Why should every Christian, saint of God, have a song of praise in his or her own heart every day? Why? 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 Say with hands. I was not pointing people. Okay, brother, again. And a lot to be thankful for, uh, and also it helps us to, 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 to gain courage. So when when we are faced terrible situations, God tells us to come for blessings. We know all that God has done in comparison to maybe other people and so on. So that has one small aspect. Okay. So what? Uh, he said we have a lot to be thankful for. What else do we have to be thankful for that God has done for us? What do we need help or what do we need to be thankful for as saints of God? Yes, ma'am. We need to thank God because of the blessings for the salvation. Yes. Because there are lots of promises in the heart for the saints. Yes. That those promises are ours. Yes. So we need to praise God for all those blessings that follow salvation, for Him saving us. That's a promise of eternity already with Him. And eternity in a happy place. Not eternity in a doomed and where the nation of teeth. And all this is a reason why we need to thank God. And we need to thank God for all the blessings, the promises of God that follows this salvation. Let's name some of those blessings. Maybe it will remind us of what we need to be thankful for. What are these blessings that God has promised every saint? saint? Yes, what? Everlasting life. Yes, my brother. What do we need to be thankful for as Christians? Those blessings that follow salvation. Yes, brother. Well, so in this world, he promised that he will never leave me and he will never forsake me. Yes, in this world, he promised that he will never leave us. 
Yes, more, 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 more. There's a lot of things to be thankful for. One more thing. For his agent providence. His agent providence, provision. Every day, day in, day out, yes. For his protection also. His protection. Which promise in the Bible did he give for that? For his protection. Yes, yes. Yes, he will give his angels charge over us. Yes, who said the Oh, sorry. So these are things we need to be thankful for. Provision, protection, good health. We need to be thankful as Christians. And this is the goodness of God to his saints. That's why we ask the first question that who are those that can give an acceptable praise to God? And you say the saints of God. So in other countries like America, there they set up that they give things generally, but for we children of God, every single day we have, we should have. If we don't have something to be thankful for, we need to pray. Yeah. Even that we are alive. In the land of the living, we need to thank God. Don't you? Don't I need to thank God that I'm alive? So this then we can bring health, good health. I ask can walk. Right now, those who read the news today will know that the president has said that he, he can't walk anymore. The former president. I just can't walk. So these are reasons why we need to thank God. We need to have praise in our heart. And salvation makes us qualify and gives us the joy of heaven. Amen. So also in our lesson, a, a short uh, reminder was given to us about what happened to the children of Israel. When the cross they were first in a difficult situation when they came out of Egypt and they were on their way out. The Egyptian army was right behind them and right in front of them, the Red Sea. And they got there, they were in between these two. Do we jump into the water and that? Or do these soldiers, will they kill us? But God did something for them. Who will tell who remind us? What did God do for them? Bible Christians. What did God do for the children of Israel? Yes, from the back. Either by name or say any of you. The Lord parted the sea for them. Yes, the Lord parted the sea for them. And they were able to pass on dry ground. And immediately they passed through. Somebody started singing. Somebody was so happy and joyous and ecstatic. Who was that person? Yes. Miriam. She was giving a song of praise to God. And how do you think giving praise to God will make God feel? Even we have some parents here and some children here. When your parent gives you something and you say thank you, what do you think you will do next time for that gift? You will do what? You will buy more. Even if the kid has been crying for one particular toy and that kid has been behaved and got taken the first one, you will look at it again and like, ah, let me just manage. You know what? Take it. <laughs> And this is why we need to be thankful and grateful to our Father that is in heaven. Also in our lesson, we are reminded a saint of God, fear to disappear. Why would fear go? Why? What will remove fear from a person? Why? What causes fear? Sin. Sin in the heart. When they sin in the heart, you will be fearful. Sinners are fearful. Let's read some scriptures. Isaiah 48, verse 22. Who read that one? Isaiah, yes. Okay, I think that one. Isaiah 48, 
22. And Proverbs 28, verse 1. Who will read that one? Proverbs 28, verse 1. Okay, Sister Jill, I think that one. Proverbs 28, verse 1. Let's start with Isaiah 48, verse 22. 22. There is no thing said, there is no thing Yes, there is no peace for the sinners, for the wicked. Yes, Proverbs? The wicked flee when no man was swear, but the righteous are born in sin. Yes, the righteous are what? They are born. But the wicked, they are never afraid. They will be running when they are chasing. And these are reasons we need to. Give thanks to God. This is the reason why we need to have a song of praise, of thanksgiving in our heart. And that scripture that we read in our passage, in our verse 2 says, Isaiah 12 now, let's go back to Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. So God is a joy and strength of his people. God is the joy and strength of his people. And there are a lot of things that we pray for. We pray for prosperity. We pray for material blessings. But are we supposed to put our joy in those things? No. <clears throat> are we supposed to put our happiness in those temporal things? In who are we supposed to put our joy and happiness and strength? In who? Let's say it together. In God, the provider, the giver of all good things. Let's read First Corinthians chapter four, verse seven. First Corinthians chapter four, verse seven. Who is this? Ah, uh, someone else. Someone else. Can you go? Yes. Thank you. So we receive every good gift from God. And we should not put our joy in what? All these temporal things. They were given by God for our benefit. We should instead praise God and be thankful to God for it. And then in verse 3, it says, Therefore, we joy shall we draw water out of the wells of, wells of salvation. Let me read that verse again. You are not saying amen. So maybe we did not understand it or not hear it. Let's read it again. Isaiah 12, verse 3. Therefore, with joy, shall we draw water out of the well of salvation. Amen. What do we mean by this? Let's read some scripture before I'll give you a chance to explain it. John chapter 4, verse 10 and 14. Who will take that one? Can you please help us with that one? John 4, 10 and 14. And who will take the second one? John 7. Who did not read here today? Okay, yes, sir. John chapter 7, verse 37 to 38. 37 to 38. John 4, verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto them, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, give me to drink 
God would lift up eyes on him, and he would have given thee in the water. Fourteen. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, drinking <coughs> up into the everlasting life. Amen. You are not saying amen. 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 The water that Jesus wants to give us to be a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. Okay, and the, and the last one, join this one. And John 7, 6, 7. If you love me, love me, do it, and do it. This is the right thing. If then man says, let him come unto me and do it. Yes. Right. Did you hit this one? Yes. He loved me, he went from me, as the scripture said. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of healing. Out of his belly shall flow what? Rivers of healing waters. So, wells of salvation will be done in our hearts. Who will explain this more? What is this well of salvation? Well, well of salvation. Who will explain it in a more understandable manner for everybody to understand? Because verse 3, of oh, itself. Well, the well of salvation is referring to the Holy Spirit, which, um, which is given to the saints. And when a, a Christian is filled with the Holy Spirit, in his, inside him is it's like a well of joy, which is ever flowing, which is like a river. It doesn't end, it doesn't stop, it just keeps on going. But that is the source of all joy, and that is the source of comfort, and that is the source of help. So I don't think that to him that believes, there is that source of blessing continuously. Amen. Amen. So there's that source of blessing that God gives in our heart, well of salvation, which is the spirit that He gives us when we are saved. Then we continually take from this world of salvation through what? Using what? What do we use to take from this world of salvation? Faith. Faith. We use faith to take this water every time. And this world of salvation will bring us lots of blessings. And the Spirit of God will never fail us. He will never fail us. He will continue to teach us and lead us to all life places until we enter eternity. This is what God does for His saints. This is the goodness of God to His saints. To His saints. And that's why we should not have broken systems in our heart. We should not have broken worlds, broken systems. Who knows what the broken system is? These are pots made with clay or where you can store water. And if they're broken, no matter what you pour in it, it will go out. So our salvation should not be saved. Because we need this well of salvation that we can draw out for, for eternity. And the Spirit of God will help us. And we draw through faith. We need faith. So children of God, we need faith to take our blessings. And the more we go and take from this world of salvation, the more we will supply and the more we will receive. The supply will never run dry, but we will be receiving, receiving, and receiving till we end that eternity. This is what God has done for his saints. Is it not good? Today, remember, I talk is the goodness of God to his saints. Let's read Isaiah 61, verse 10. Isaiah 61, verse 10. Who read it for us? Someone who is not ready. Isaiah 61, verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, my soul shall be joined to the right one. For he had clothed me with the garment of salvation, he 
in her poverty with the rule of righteousness, as a bride good to him that sought him, ornaments, and as a bride adorning herself with her jewels. So we need to rejoice in God as saints of God for this well of salvation that he has done in our heart, given to us his spirit. Now, when we go back and read our text from Isaiah in verse 4, it says, and in that day shall he say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doing, doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Who will explain the meaning of exalted? That his name is exalted. What does that mean? That verse 4, Isaiah 12, 4. Yes, brother. Uh, to, to raise up or to give honor so it's the name that is highly honored. Yes, to give honor, to raise his name high. And how do we give honor to, to God? How do you give honor to God? In that verse, he gave us one word. What was it? Yes. Yes, that's one of it. That's one word that he used there. That I want us to see. Yes, ma'am. He says, declare. We should declare what? His doings. We should declare his doings. How do we declare his doings? How do we declare his doings? Children of God, even in this church, I think we used to do it. Are you sure? Are you not sure? How? Through testimonies. Through testimonies, we declare his doings. And we see that it's important for us to give testimony because we are lifting up the name of God. Before we explain more testimony and who are to give testimony, because I'll ask you that question. Let's read some Bible passages. Isaiah 43, verse 10. Who will read that for us? Hands up, who will read? Who will read? Yes, but again, you will take that one. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 8, that's for Gali, and Psalm 105, verse 1. Psalm 105, verse 1, who take that one? You take that one, thank you. Okay, let's start with Isaiah uh, 43, verse 8. For the, uh, chapter 43, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant, whom I have chosen. That he may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God, neither shall there be Those that will declare his doings, he called them a name. What is the name he called them? His witnesses. His witnesses. Let's take note of that. He called them his witness. So you must witness the goodness of God in your life. And how do you witness them? Through salvation. Yes, the next verse. First Corinthians 16, verse 8. Yes, but I will carry emphasis until the third of us. Sorry, you guys got my 16, 8. Okay, sorry, I got that one wrong. Let's read Psalm 105, verse 1. That's not the scripture I wanted. Psalm 105, verse 1. Okay. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Yes. So we need to give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Among who? Psalm 105, verse 1. Among who should we do it? People. Among the people, among the people of God, among the people. This is how we give, we declare the doings of God. Now, who are those that can declare the doings of God? 
Just be foolish. Who are those that can live an acceptable testimony? Or why do we say the righteous, the saint, should be the one to give testimony? Why? Go and help us. You know, when it's testimony time, you, you do know we give testimony. And once it's testimony time, we say those that are saved. Yes. Why do we say that? Yes. Because they are the ones who witness the goodness of God. Thank you. They are witnesses of the goodness of God. Who are to add to it? Yes, sir. We are testimony in the world. God a good testimony about God, not about themselves. Yes, yes. their testimony went more meaning it will not be about themselves, but about God, what God has done for them. So you need that? You still want to get me? So this is why <coughs> why we say saints of God should give testimony. What the testimony to be To be edifying. That's what the scripture says, right? To be edifying to other saints. And when you give testimony, we always tell you to give testimony about what God has done for you. Starting with what? The most important thing. The salvation of your soul. And when you give testimony, we tell you even not to tell us too much about what has happened, how deep in sin you have gone. Because that is not what giving glory to God. But we tell you to give meaningful testimony that will edify the saints of God and cause people to rejoice. Not stand up and give like the example our teacher gave us yesterday. In those days, I used to drink 12 cartons of uh, will that be fast? No. But you tell us that God is saved before drinking. So it's good to give testimony. And when we call for testimony, saints of God, we need to stand up. Why do you think saints of God don't stand up? Why? Why don't they stand up? When you say this testimony, you see only everyone, like the same people that you always see stand up. Why? What happened? Let's discuss these things because these are things that affect us. Why? Are we living in a victorious life overseas? That's the first part we start. That's where we start. Every day, are we living a victorious life overseas? That's what stopped a lot of people from giving testimony. And next, do we have confidence in God? Some people are passing through afflictions of life. And because of this, uh, should I really give my testimony? And some only want to give testimony of only the big things that have happened. They forget the small things God is doing for them every day. That they are alive. That they have good health. They don't want to tell us, this is why we need to stand up as saints. When it's testimony time, because we are saved should be the reason we should stand up. I thank God that he saved me. He delivered me from sin. I'm no more going to hell. Now I'm going to heaven. That's enough. There's the whole duty why Jesus came to save you from hell. All others are temporary blessings that He has given to you. You can pay that for it also. But they are temporary. So you start from the main source salvation. That's why we Christians need to live victorious life every day. Let's read our Bible. Let's pray using faith to draw out of the way of salvation God has done in our heart. His spirit that he has given to us. So do we need to give testimony? Do we need to give testimony? Yes. Is it important? Yes. Will you give testimony the next time? Yes. Uh, people are not answering me. <laughs> okay. 
So let that please let's tell that and give glory to God. God says jealous of God. He will not share his glory with anyone. And he wants praise from him. He created us for one reason, to praise him for his doings and his excellent work. So we need to declare, as that verse say, declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. When we give testimonies, we encourage him to sinners. It's one way that we witness. It's one way that we preach. You don't really have, necessarily have to be here to be doing the preaching. But when we call for testimony, and you stand up and start telling uh, what God has done for you in your life, someone is listening. Someone is getting encouraged. And even the devil, you are, you are winning another victory by faith over the devil. Because God will be looking at you, that is my child. And what to say in whom I am well pleased at the end of the statement. So that's why we need to declare his doing. In verse 5 says, Sing unto the Lord, for he has done excellent things. This is, this is known to all the earth. God has done a lot, a lot of blessings that we know in the in, in, all over the world. The sun, the heat, the winter, everything we need to have songs of praise. This verse telling us to sing. So you don't have to be a choir member to sing. Love a song. If you don't know, la, 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 until you get it. We praise the oh God. Sing unto the Lord. And the final verse, verse six, they cry out and shout down the inhabitants of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. God is always in our midst. God is always in our midst. And when two or three are gathered together, if we stand up, praise his name, cry out, we shout in our prayers, in our singing, in our testimony, God will be very, very happy and very good. Because we will be doing his giving. And in our second text, we took it from Habakkuk. Habakkuk. Chapter 3, which was from 17 to 19. Oh, read it quickly to remind us because we want to look at the confidence that Habakkuk had or had in God. Is God so the confidence he had in God. Okay. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17. Yes. For though the three trees shall not blossom, neither shall food be in their plants. The labor of the earth shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The dogs are cut off from the fields, and there shall be no help in the stocks. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and you will make my feet like wings feet, and you will make me walk upon my own places. The Amen. So it was a explaining a situation to us. If you understand this situation, explain it to us. What is he explaining to us in verse 17? By the way, what is he explaining? What what's going on? Because he's in a challenge here. There's a problem here, and he's expressing something here to us. His feelings are very clear in that verse. Yes, one, one. The Lord comes to the in hunger, although in hunger. Let's look at it. He said the fig tree shall not blossom. 
Where shall the fruit be in the Bible? There might be famine, terrible hunger. We may not have money. We may be passing through life affliction that is holding you tight down. You may not know how you eat the next day. The field, the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no uh, head in the stalks. Yet, yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. Yet you do what? Rejoice. So no matter what circumstance of life we are going through, we should know that there is a God and He is there above looking down at us and He is ready to answer us. So He went here crying unto the Lord from His heart. But to see Him coming out with the song of victory, saying, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. This is how sometimes we Christians are in this situation. And we go to God crying, but when we go on our knees, He comforts us and gives us hope that tomorrow it will be better for us. Amen. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will join in the God of my salvation. Back to that point again. The God of His salvation. The God that has saved me. So circumstances of life should not stop our testimony. Circumstances of life should not stop our joy in the Lord. Who will give us other examples in the Bible of those who went to our preachers? Yes, ma. Job. Who would describe what happened to Job? Yes, Job was a righteous man. And God knows, I and mean, God knew him as a righteous man. So that he was righteous only to the world, but to heaven he was righteous. And Satan was jealous, so to speak. And he, Satan, confronted God that Job was serving God and being righteous because God was doing him and providing him for his needs. But God said, Well, even if you take all those things from me, Job is still serving me. Job is still the righteous. <coughs> so he allowed Satan to go into the life of Job. And within a day, calamities upon the other, the children were gone, the children, everything was gone. Above it all, the world still over him, but he never gave up. That was still the righteous. Yes. And he lost the whole family. His whole family was gone. His whole living. Because he was a farmer, a commercial farmer, with lots of animals, gone. He would heal himself in affliction, sickness, boils all over him. But he said, I know that my redeemer did it. And that at the last day, he know he will see him. Though the walks will eat his flesh, even in dying, he will see God. Whether in living or in dying. The whole goal is to get to heaven. Whatever we pass through in this life should not stop us from getting into heaven. Heaven is our home. Heaven is where we are looking at. And we should do everything to give glory to God, to praise His name. Let our testimony be known. Pray, read our Bible every day using faith to draw out of the well of salvation so that you can give us victory every day so we can reach that heaven at the end. Because of our time, let's read some Bible passages. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 34. Second Samuel 22, 34. Yes, Rathani. Verse 34. Do 
make up my feet like hind's feet and settle me upon my face. Amen. That's how strong God will make us. And He will lift us up. And let's go to us Psalm, Psalm 18, verse 33. And who we'll read Psalm 46, verse 2 for us? Psalm 46, verse 2. I need a little reader for it. But we'll see who can please take it off us. Psalm 46, verse 2. Psalm 18, verse 33. Who we'll read it for us? Yes. Okay. And Psalm 46, verse 2. Therefore, will not wear fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Yes. We will not fail. Amen. 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 We will not fail. Even if the earth is removed from under our feet, then we are in all kinds of troubles, all kinds of life situations. We will still rejoice in the God of our salvation. Knowing very well that at the end of it we will get to heaven. Heaven is the goal. This is the goodness of God to the saints. God is good. Is he not good? He is. He is very good. So faith makes us to secure, to be secure in God. That no matter how dark the day is. There is no doubt as to the outcome. We will make heaven at last. Amen. That's what we are looking at. So my fellow brothers and sisters, are we going to continue to rejoice and be glad in our God, the God of our salvation? Or are we going to let circumstances of life take, take our joy away? That's our challenge. God bless you. Amen.